Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Rogowski Probes. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to how Rogowski probes are constructed and how they're used to measure current. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with traditional clamping style ferromagnetic core current probes and how they're used. If you're not familiar with these type of probes, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Current Probes before beginning this presentation. Current probes or sensors convert a measured current value into a voltage in a way that's accurate, reproducible, and predictable. They are primarily used with oscilloscopes and multimeters in a variety of different applications, with common measured current levels ranging from milliamps to thousands of amps. Traditional current probes are constructed using a ferromagnetic core, and in many cases a split core design is used, which allows the loop to be opened or closed. The reason for using a split core is that the probe's jaws can be clamped around the current carrying conductor without needing to break the circuit. And many traditional current probes use a combination of a current transformer and a Hall effect sensor in order to be able to measure current at frequencies from about 100 megahertz all the way down to DC. Traditional current probes do, however, have some limitations, mostly due to their ferromagnetic core. One of these is saturation of the core, which means the core can no longer handle additional flux. And this in turn limits the maximum current that can be accurately measured. The ferromagnetic core can also retain some magnetism even when there's no measured current. So these types of probes should be magnetized or degaussed before making measurements. Another limitation of traditional current probes is that it can be difficult to connect them in some environments. Probes with ferromagnetic cores are normally rigid and inflexible, and they can be quite large, especially as their maximum current rating increases. Rogowski probes, named after German physicist Walter Rogowski, are another type of current probe that can address some of the limitations of traditional current probes. These probes use an air core coil rather than a ferromagnetic core. This air core is small and flexible and can be opened on one end for easy connection to conductors. And since the core is not ferromagnetic, it also does not saturate. Similar to a current transformer, a flow of current through a conductor induces a voltage in a surrounding coil and active circuitry then processes the signal to produce a voltage which is proportional to the sensed current. Let's spend a few moments discussing how Rogowski probes, or Rogowski coils, are constructed. The coil is made of a wire that's evenly wound around a support to create a helical, or spring-shaped pattern. This support is non-ferromagnetic, and is also flexible enough to be bent or curved into different shapes. After reaching the end of the coil, the wire returns to the starting point by passing through or along the central axis of the support. To make a probe, this coil is then wrapped or bent into a loop around the current carrying conductor. A current passing through this loop induces a voltage in the coil, and this voltage is a function of the current's rate of change. Integrating over this coil voltage then produces an output voltage which is proportional to the measured current. The integrator is typically constructed using an op-amp, a feedback loop, and a filter. Because the integrator is an active device, Rogowski probes are also active devices and require power to operate. Rogowski probes are looped or wrapped around the current carrying conductor, and normally one end of the loop can be unplugged for this purpose. It's usually best to keep the loop as circular as possible, but accuracy is typically still good even if the loop is slightly deformed. Like other current probes, Rogowski probes have an arrow or similar marking showing the current direction. Note too that the coil can be wrapped around the conductor multiple times in order to improve sensitivity. Looping the coil n times increases the output of the coil linearly by n. And finally, the scope, meter, or other measuring instrument must be configured. This involves entering the volts per amp scaling factor, which is often on the order of hundreds or tens of millivolts per amp, setting the coupling type, usually AC, and choosing the input impedance, 
which for scopes is typically 1 megaohm. As mentioned earlier, Rogowski probes have numerous advantages. One of these is that they're able to measure very large currents, well into the kiloamp range, since there's no ferromagnetic core to saturate. The coil is small and flexible, and can normally be opened on one end. This makes Rogowski probes very easy to use in tight spaces and around larger conductors such as bus bars. Unlike traditional current probes, Rogowski probes also do not increase in size as maximum measurable current increases. These probes have a bandwidth that's high enough to accurately measure currents with very fast rise times, and to measure higher order current harmonics. And lastly, Rogowski probes have a very low insertion impedance, often around the picohenry range. This lower insertion impedance means that the signal response is very fast, and that the voltage signal produced by the probe is very linear as well. But Rogowski probes also have some disadvantages, the first of which being that they are AC only and cannot measure down to DC. They also have lower sensitivity than current probes with ferromagnetic cores, which means that Rogowski probes are not a good choice when measuring very low level currents. And as mentioned earlier, Rogowski probes are active probes and require power either directly from the attached scope or measuring instrument or from some other external source or from batteries. This is because the active integrator circuit used to produce the probe's scaled output voltage is an active device. Let's end with a brief summary. The ferromagnetic core used in traditional clamping style current probes can lead to some limitations. The first of these is that this core can be saturated with magnetic flux, and this in turn limits the maximum measurable current. The second is that the core causes the probes to be rigid and probe size increases with increasing current rating. This can make it difficult to properly position the probe in some applications. Rogowski probes, or coils, are one means of addressing these issues. The core of a Rogowski probe is non-ferromagnetic and is very flexible, meaning that these probes can be used to measure very high currents and can be used more easily in crowded or difficult to reach environments. The greatest limitation of Rogowski probes is that their sensitivity is lower than that of ferromagnetic core probes, although this can be somewhat improved by looping the probe around the conductor several times. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Rogowski Probes. If you'd like to learn more about different types of probes, current measurements, or similar topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.